Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Once upon a time, in a small town called Cranford, people talked about a man named Peter. Some called him Poor Peter. They wondered if he was now the Aga Jenkins of Chundrabadid, a faraway place. This was a big question for them. In my home, people often said I was not careful. They blamed me for my mistakes. I did not like this, so I wanted to be very careful and smart this time. I wanted to find out the truth about Peter. I would gather facts and show them to my father. My father was a friend of the two Miss Jenkinses. I started asking questions. I asked Miss Pole and Mrs. Forrester about Peter. They both knew him. But when I asked, they talked about many other things. Mrs. Forrester talked about a story with a prophet. Then she talked about hair oils. Miss Pole talked about llamas and then about banks. It was very confusing. Finally, I found out one fact. Peter was last seen in India or near India. Miss Pole remembered that she had heard this news when she bought an Indian muslin gown long ago. While I was asking questions, I did not notice anything special in Cranford. Everything seemed normal. The sun shone and the rain fell as usual. But then, something surprising happened. One day, Miss Maddie and I were sitting together. She was knitting, and I was reading the Saint James's Chronicle. It was almost twelve o'clock, the time for visitors. We were about to change our clothes when we heard a knock. It was a visitor's knock, three taps. We started to get up to change, but then Miss Pole called out, "Don't go! I can't wait. I must speak to you." We tried to look calm. But we were very curious. Miss Pole came in, looking very excited. She lifted her hands and then brought them down in silence. She had big news to tell us. Miss Pole came into the room, very excited. She said, "What do you think, Miss Maddie? Lady Glenmire is going to marry Mr. Hoggins." "Marry?" We both said. Mary, that's crazy. Yes, Mary," said Miss Pole. "I heard it in a shop. Lady Glenmire is making a big mistake. It's not right to talk about marriage in a shop. Miss Maddie and I would never want our marriage talked about in a grocer's shop. But," said Miss Maddie, "maybe it's not true. Maybe we are wrong." No," said Miss Pole. "I checked. I went to Mrs. Fitzadam to borrow a cookery book. I talked about how hard it is for gentlemen to keep a house. Mrs. Fitzadam said it is true. Lady Glenmire and Mr. Hoggins have agreed to marry. Mr. Hoggins eats bread and cheese and drinks beer every night." Lady Glenmire will have to get used to it. Mary," said Miss Maddie again. "I never thought of it. Two people we know getting married. It's very close to us." "Yes," said Miss Pole. "My heart stopped when I heard it. You never know who will marry next. Here in Cranford, Lady Glenmire might have thought she was safe." Do you remember the song Tibby Fowler? Asked Miss Pole. It says, "Set her on the tintock tap. The wind will blow a man to her." That's because Tibby Fowler was rich," said Miss Matty. "Well, Lady Glenmire must have something attractive," said Miss Pole. I wondered, but how can she like Mister Hoggins? I'm not surprised he likes her. Oh, Mr. Hoggins is rich and nice-looking," said Miss Maddie.
He is kind and good-tempered. She wants a house and a stable, said Miss Pole with a laugh. Now what will Mrs. Jameson say? She left someone in charge of her house to keep followers away from her maids. And now that person is getting married to someone Mrs. Jameson thinks is vulgar and not good enough for Cranford society. Has Mr. Hoggins ever visited Lady Glenmire at Mrs. Jameson's house? What will Mrs. Jameson say when she finds out? She won't be happy. We were all wondering about the future. When would the wedding be? Where? How much money does Mr. Hoggins have? Will Lady Glenmire keep her title? How will the servants announce them as Lady Glenmire and Mr. Hoggins? Will they be invited to visit? Will Mrs. Jameson let us choose between her and Lady Glenmire? We all liked Lady Glenmire. She was friendly and kind. Mrs. Jameson was dull and pompous. But we were loyal to Mrs. Jameson for so long. Felt wrong to think about disobeying her. Mrs. Forrester came to visit us while we still wore our old caps and patched collars. We forgot about our clothes because we were eager to see how she would react to the news. Miss Pole was supposed to tell her, but she had a fit of coughing just when Mrs. Forrester arrived. Miss Pole looked at us, asking for help with her eyes, so we waited for her to stop coughing. Mrs. Forrester was as surprised as we were. She felt even more upset because she cared about the noble class. She thought Lady Glenmire was making a big mistake by marrying Mr. Hoggins. When Mrs. Forrester and Miss Pole left, Miss Maddie and I tried to stay calm. But Miss Maddie was really upset. She said it had been over 15 years since she heard about anyone she knew getting married except Miss Jessie Brown. She felt like something unexpected might happen next. I noticed that after an engagement is announced, unmarried ladies dress more brightly. Maybe they want to show they are still single. Miss Maddie and Miss Pole talked a lot about bonnets, gowns, caps, and shawls in the two weeks after we heard the news. But it might also be because it was a warm and sunny march. Lady Glenmire didn't dress fancy to win Mr. Hoggins's heart. She still dressed simply. At church, she seemed to avoid her friends. But she looked happier and younger. Mr. Hoggins looked cheerful and wore new boots, showing he was ready for his new life. People said his old boots were the same ones he wore when he started working in Cranford 25 years ago, repaired many times. None of the ladies in Cranford congratulated Lady Glenmire or Mr. Hoggins. We wanted to ignore the whole thing until Mrs. Jameson returned. We felt it was better to stay silent about the engagement. But it was hard to stay quiet because we wanted to ask many questions. Our thoughts changed when the main shopkeeper in Cranford announced the arrival of the spring fashions. The new clothes would be shown on Tuesday. Miss Maddie had been waiting to buy a new silk gown. I had offered to get patterns from Drumble. But she remembered her disappointment with the sea green turban and decided to wait. I should tell you a bit about myself. My father was an old friend of the Jenkins family. He let me stay in Cranford all winter because Miss Maddie had written to him about my bravery during the panic. But now that the days were longer and brighter, he wanted me to come home. I stayed hoping to find more information about the Aga Jenkins and poor Peter. I wanted to see if their stories matched the facts I gathered from Miss Pole and Mrs. Forrester.